All right, class, as you're getting more familiar with StatKey from last week when you were working on your graphs and uh, importing data and so forth, um, I thought that I would go ahead and show you that for Unit 3 material on normal distributions, you can also use StatKey. There is a previous video that you'll want to watch where I showed you how to use the z-score formula, how to get the z-score, how to interpret the z-score, and, you know, tell what that number means. And then I gave you an, uh, an outside website to use that I'm just familiar with using in my other courses. But since you're, since you're using StatKey for MM570 to do a lot of things, I did also want to make just a short video and show you that StatKey can also be used to do some normal distribution calculations. It's not quite as efficient, in my opinion, as the website. Um, but certainly, if you're feeling really comfortable with StatKey, I just I wanted you to be aware that you could actually use it to do some of these calculations. All right, so let me go ahead and let's go to StatKey. And, of course, when you go into StatKey, it looks like this. And so, you know, let's suppose you had questions where they gave you the mean and standard deviation, and they just wanted those um, probabilities below and above the um, particular value. So we could go here to theoretical distribution and to normal. Click on that. And over here to the right, you see that's where you would put in your mean and standard deviation. Now, by default, you see the mean is at zero and the standard deviation is at one. Those default values are for z-scores. So if the if the homework question or a quiz question already gives you a number that's a z-score, then you could find the probability below and above that, but just make sure you would realize that you would need to know to make the mean zero and the standard deviation of one if it's already a z-score. So like, let's suppose I have a z-score of 1.52. If I wanna find what's to the left of that, I could come up here and click left tail it's going to give me this just kind of uh, random chosen value. But if I wanted to put in, say, the z-score number of 1.52, I could c uh, come down here, click my mouse on top of that number, just left click it, and then it lets me give my own cutoff value. And that's where I could put in 1.52, hit OK, and it's going to give me the probability below a z-score of 1.52. There it is, 0.936. If you wanted to find above, you would almost think you could just come up here and click right tail. But when I do that, it actually starts me out at a different value. It's kind of got these automatic cutoffs. So you may just have to reset plot, click on right tail, and then again, left click this and change it to, you know, whatever the Z score is, 1.52. Hit OK. And you realize that that number is the leftover of what we got below. Remember what's below plus what's above should give you one or 100%. So as I said, I think the other website is maybe a little more efficient. You're welcome to use either one, whatever one you're more comfortable with. But I did just want to show you this. Now let's suppose the number is not in z-score format. So like, let's suppose, I think the numbers I had given you on the previous video, video were like a mean of 170. So we could go ahead and click reset plot up here edit our parameters, so click that, and put in a mean of 170 and a standard deviation of 15. These were, the, I think, the same values I had used in the previous video. So these would be assuming these are not already z-scores, that these are some real-life variable and they've given you a 170 and a standard deviation. I'm going to click OK, and then suppose it wants, like, um, you know, the probability of getting, let's suppose these are some sort of standardized scores and the average score is a 170 with a standard deviation of 15. Well, we may want to find out the probability of getting below a score of 175. So below would mean click on the left tail. I would have to once again cl left click here and change that to cutoff value of 175. Click OK. And there it's going to give me that there's a 0.631 probability of getting below a 175. So, um, you know, a little bit, you know, I say a little bit more having to reset and some things, but you could definitely do it. If you needed to find between two values, like let's suppose I wanted to find between 165 and 192. I could click on two tail here 
And I would just have to change it to um, this lower one to the 165, which was the lower value. This upper one left click, change that one to the 192. And here's what this one does. You, it, it gives you the values in the tails. Um, and actually, let me, it, doesn't, it didn't change this to 165. Let me see if I can do it. Yeah, actually, it may not even do this. This one may just only do symmetric placements. So, um, you know, all the more reason if you get a question where you have to find between two values, you're probably going to want to go use the other website that I gave you and showed you in the earlier video. So, you know, I just noticed that Stacky did do a few normal distributions and thought I would share it. But, you know, again, you can kind of tell from this that it's a little bit more user friendly if you use the other one, but you are more than welcome to um, explore around and see what you can also do with StatKey. So um, hopefully that's helpful for those of y'all that noticed that StatKey could also do some normal distribution calculations.